everyone, it's Sab. Welcome back to the channel. I'm currently snug as a bug in bed with jungle scog over here. But on the inside, I'm kind of freaking out just a little bit because my final exams of clerkship are tomorrow. It's like 10 p.m. Exams are at 8 a.m. tomorrow and I'm done studying. I've gone to the point where I can't absorb any more knowledge. So I thought that while I'm in my prime study mode, I would answer a very commonly asked question, which is how I study for my med school exams. So we're gonna keep this really fun and casual. It's like we're having a sleepover together. I have my laptop over here and I'll just take a bit of time to go over the process that I have developed when it comes to studying for my exams, especially for something as content heavy like medicine. I will start off with the disclaimer that there is no one study method that works for everybody and I by no means would consider myself an academic weapon, but I have passed all of my classes so far and I've been managing quite a hectic schedule and I'm able to still study and relatively do well on my exam, so hopefully this will give you some ideas that you may implement into your own routine or it may just be interesting for some of you. All right, so the very first step in the studying process is to attend the lectures. For me, especially in first and second year when we had you know in-person lectures attending them physically really just allowed me to keep with the flow of the material I found that if I was left to my own devices and I would just make a list of things for me to watch afterwards I would always be weeks and weeks behind especially when in med school every single day you are rapidly progressing through the content when you go in person number one you are forced to be most up to date with the lectures at hand and you obviously can't you know be on TikTok or you know watch other videos concurrently while the lecture is going on so it really forces me to lock in and I feel that I always did much better on the lectures that I physically attended versus those that I would try and watch the recordings of afterwards. Even if you don't fully understand it right then and there in the lecture later on when you're reviewing you'll kind of remember that you've heard of this before and it'll click that much faster and help you with your reviewing. In clerkship, we sometimes have lectures squeezed between our clinical duties, and honestly, many times I'm too tired to keep up. Other times, the lecturer covers four to five chapters in one lecture, so it's impossible not to miss notes. That's why I started using Unstuck, who I am partnering with on this video. It's similar to Notion and organizes my notes by class, but the big thing is that while I'm taking notes, it's recording the lecture and transcribing it in real time. That way, I don't miss anything. And later, while I'm reviewing, if I'm unsure about something, I can just ask in the chat and it pulls the answer directly from the recording. Once I have my complete notes, a mix of mine and what the app created, I turn them in the flashcards. I just ask it to generate them and I have 200 flashcards in literally two minutes. I then supplement these with my own flashcards so I cover everything very thoroughly. I then use the exam objectives provided by my school, which is what they base the exam questions on, and paste them into the app. It combines my own notes with reliable information from the internet so I get a complete, well-referenced answer to study from. Unlike ChatGPT, which pulls answers from the whole internet, Unstuck sources them from my own notes and even adds references. Next, I move on to practice questions. Our school gives us some question banks, but there's not many of them, and sometimes those questions don't even show up on the exam. I still do them, but Unstuck also generates unlimited questions directly from my own school notes and objectives. Because they're based on exactly what I'm supposed to know, these questions actually cover all of these objectives. Combined with the school banks, they prepare me way better, and a few times I swear the exact questions ended up being on the actual exam. Since we're in the beginning of back to school season, start recording your lectures from day one. Organize notes, make flashcards, and practice questions with Unstuck. Link in the description or scan the QR to try it out. Back to the video. After I attend the lectures, I move on to kind of the bread and butter, the bulk of my studying, and that is flashcards. So I'd say that the majority of my classmates use Anki. Um, even in undergrad, I would use that. We're very lucky in that the upper years of our classes have Anki decks that are just passed down generations. So I don't have to spend the hours and hours actually creating the flashcards from the lectures and other content. It's already just given to us. And in an ideal world, I would just do a little bit of Anki every day. But with clerkship, I've found that I am more likely to save it to 
two, three weeks before the exam and just blast through the Anki cards then. So fundamentally, the how flashcards work is that they combine two very established study methods, which is just active recall and spaced repetition. Active recall is when you have something like a fill in the blank and you're forced to actively recall that information. And with spaced repetition, it's just, you know, whatever, whatever, encoding or short-term memory into long-term memory. The better you are at a card, the further along in the schedule it will put it. So it'll force you to review the things that you're not good at more frequently than those that you already understand. And I feel that especially for things like medicine or, you know, other STEM classes that are very memorization based, a lot of people say like that studying for med school is like drinking out of a fire hydrant. It's so much information. I feel like that is the only way, the only way I have found that I'm able to actually get through all of the content is by blitzing through those flashcards. It can be quite mind numbing to do so many Anki cards, especially when you have like <laughs> a thousand to do in one day. Oh, those were the days. So I've found different tips and tricks to help me kind of lock in and the best one is to combine it with some kind of physical activity. So if you've seen in my vlogs in the past, I really love my Anki and walking break, which is where I have the Anki app downloaded on my phone and I'll go for a really long walk and I'll look like an iPad kid just blitzing Anki on my phone. Anki on the treadmill, you could do the 12, 330, you know, have it on an inlet and just blitz through your flashcards. More recently, I've been really into doing Anki on my stationary exercise bike and I just have the remote and I blitz through that as well. There's just something about combining it with physical activity that you're so physically tired that I have no other option but to mentally lock in. That doesn't make any sense, but I just feel like the distraction of my body moving helps me lock in more on doing my flashcards. Another thing is that I will do my flashcards literally anywhere, especially when I get closer to exams and I find that I don't have a lot of free time. I have the Anki app on my phone, so I'll do it while I'm curling my hair, while I'm brushing my teeth. First thing I do when I wake up in the morning, last thing I do before I go to bed. And then it's also obviously really good to try and optimize your environment as much as possible. Sometimes I'll go out with a picnic blanket and run my Anki there. I'll do it in cafes. I'll do it outside. Really, I feel like I'm just trying to trick my brain as much as possible to blitz in through those cards. And then after I do all of the Anki, I feel like I have a decent understanding of the concepts, but my biggest gripe with any kind of flashcards is that it's very much so memorization based, but it just feels like you memorize a bunch of fun facts and you don't necessarily have the scaffold to put all that that information together. So the next thing that I like to do is study based off of objectives. So what my school does is that it gives us a really long PDF document of all of the objectives in each of the subjects. So I'm studying for psych and family medicine. They give us a really long list of objectives of what counts as testable content. And this I think is so important because technically speaking, they're not allowed to test you on anything that isn't covered with an objective. So theoretically, by covering all the objectives, you would have covered anything that could possibly come from the exams. That being said, I swear to God, in my surgery exams, they're pulling things out of a hat, but theoretically, theoretically, that is the case. So if you have something similar where your professor gives you what you're going to be covering, what I like to do is that I like to take all of those and then paste it into whatever document. I like to use Notion and then I'll use a combination of AI and me looking through my own notes to fill out those objectives. And then it's basically to me like running Anki again. Today I went on a walk and I reviewed my objectives. I was on the bike and I reviewed those objectives and I try and engage in active recall as much as possible. There's a little toggle function that you have in Notion that's really great for this where it will give an objective. Here I will open one right now. Describe the diagnostic criteria, symptoms, signs, and course of schizophrenia and delusional disorder, and I'll just go through that. And then, so I just go through all those objectives. It honestly doesn't take as long as it seems. There are a lot of them, but at this point you would have attended the lectures and you would have covered everything through your flashcards. So now this is just a matter of putting everything together. So all these fun facts that I've learned from Anki that like clozapine causes a granulocytosis and has the highest risk of causing diabetes, I now put that into the antipsychotics objectives. I'm like, okay, that's where it fits. And then from there, I move on to practice questions, which is arguably also one of the most important parts of the study process. Actually, all of these are important. Why else would I do it if it wasn't important? So once again, very lucky that our school offers us practice exams. And the important thing with practice exams is number one, it helps you identify the weak spots that you need to study more of, but then also 
it helps you get into the test taking mindset and environment. Just doing Anki flashcards, just learning the objectives is not the same as having to read and comprehend a question stem and apply your knowledge to it. So it's very important that you do as many practice questions as possible. So I will typically open mine on my iPad. I'll use something like Notability and GoodNotes and I'll just go through and answer all of the questions. And then afterwards, I go and review it. I'm gonna insert some part here where I get into the nitty gritty of that. Hi guys, it's Post Exam Sab. Let us together go over my notes so you could better see what I'm trying to talk about in this video. So this is where I keep all of my exams and you can see I did it for all of my different rotations. I am going to show you what these look like. I check it all in a bright red color. And then you can see here, for example, with question two, which I got wrong, not only will I look at why A is the right answer, which is when you wanna do PPI for empiric therapy for uncomplicated dyspepsia, but I'll also look at the other options and figure out why these were not the right answer. So you wouldn't do a CT, you wouldn't do gastro because there's an absence of alarm features in the question prompt. And then these, and then E is definitely not an option. And then D is more so for constipation, not dyspepsia. And then also what I like to do in these practice questions is that you'll see here that on the sides, when I'm going through the exam, I'll write little notes for myself that I need to go over the pap smear flow chart, that I need to review all cancer screening guidelines. It's just when I go through the questions and I'm like, shoot, I really don't know this at all. It's a reminder to myself that this is something that I need to hone in on a little bit more. Now with all of this information about the topics that I need to work on a bit more, what I do is that I create a big document where I create flowcharts. So like we were talking about over here, you can see that I wanted to review hypertension, asthma control, cancer screening, vaccination schedules, and the pap smear guidelines, and I basically go through that. I am a really big flowchart kind of girl, and I'll use whatever resources I have from my own notes or from the internet, and I'll go through these specific topics that I need to work on. I like to do it in different colors just because I feel like it's fun, and it also helps me remember it a bit more, and then as I go through each topic, I cross it off, and it's really fun. I do the same thing with psychiatry over here. The big thing that I really wanted to do is go over all of the different antidepressants and their mechanism of action, and I really like this flowchart tree diagram kind of business. So that is basically the process of how I do my exams. Like today is the day before my exam. I really focus just on honing on a lot of my weak topics. I reviewed, you know, hypertension medications and when to use them for specific comorbidities, antipsychotic drugs and all of their side effects, antidepressants and all of their names. These were the things that I knew that I was weak at, especially when I did the practice questions. And so now I feel better that I covered all of those topics. So I feel like all my bases are there. So now just for some general study tips that I have found that work for me. One of the most important ones is changing my environment. By what my three hour study with me may lead you to think, I do not like sitting at my desk for a really long period of time. I just can't focus. So that's why in my vlogs, you always see me going to a cafe walking outside, sitting in a park, sitting in a park bench. I know it's not the most convenient. I don't really have my desk set up, but I can't be in one place for too long or else I won't be able to focus. So as soon as I start feeling my mind wander, I will pack it up and move somewhere else. Even if it means going outside to my garden or going to the living room, you want to switch up your environment as much as possible. At least for me. Another thing, especially obviously for someone like me who doesn't shut up, I find that explaining concepts to myself or ideally another person really helps solidify those concepts in my head. Many times I'll open up FaceTime on my computer or just talk to a mirror and just explain things. And it works so much better than me writing things down or just thinking things in my head because it feels like I'm trying to explain something to a student or to a group of people. Saying those words out loud and making it make sense in your head really makes a difference. I've also done study groups in the past where I work with one of my other friends or a group of friends and we just explain concepts to another. I've done whiteboard studying where I draw big diagrams on the whiteboard and try and connect everything together. Sometimes I'll do Pomodoros if it's late at night and I'm getting really distracted. All of these are good methods as well, but you just need to try it out for yourself and see if it works for you. So yeah, that's basically how I tackle my med school exams. At least that's what I've been doing in the past few years and what I've been doing in the few weeks leading up to tomorrow's exam. Everybody's brain works differently, even for me. Sometimes I like to switch up my study methods based on how I'm feeling. So take all of this advice with a grain of salt. Maybe it'll just give you some ideas on how you can jazz up your current study routine. If you're watching this, you're either just a big fan and just watch all my videos, which love you, or you're also going through exams right now. Whatever the case is, good luck. We'll all get through it together, hopefully. 
and it's a tough time but we'll be able to get through it thank you guys so so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye